Hey everyone, if you're new to my channel, I'm essentially doing a series where I'm dropping out of my PhD in six months. And during that process, my goal is to get to 5K monthly in passive income. Now, before I even start approaching that, I need a project and knowledge management system to really help me plan out the things that I need to do. Once you have lots of things and you have notes everywhere, it just becomes really hard to manage everything. And so the first thing I'm doing is setting up this system with Obsidian. If you're not familiar, Obsidian is a note-taking app with a lot of customization options. And so yesterday, I, or so far, I've streamlined sort of my workflow of how I'm gonna interact with projects and tasks that I have to do. Um, go ahead and watch I think day five, day six, seven, those I cover that sort of system. Um, so essentially I'm following getting things done and second brain and actually I'll be back. My wife locked herself out. So let's get back into this. So where were we? So day five, day seven, I went over my project system I started to create a template for projects. Now, because it's because the app, or because yeah, because Obsidian is just note taking without um, extra functionality, without community plugins, I did create a template of of how each project is going to typically look like. And so now, what I'm doing is exploring these sort of key community plugins to add the extra functionality to be able to track tasks within projects and assign each project, for example, like a, a status and have it all within a table. Um, these sorts of things are are, cap are possible with Obsidian, but I do need to explore it a little bit more. Um, yeah, and so going over since last time, I started a, an example project that that was really that's i'm using as uh, it's an actual project that i'm doing and so it's gonna help me sort of flush out the pipeline of of how i'm interacting with projects and so here you can see uh, there were some like style changes i had to make these prompts i wanted to make them all bold to really make them stand out um yeah so with this particular example um, it's a chest radiology report generation project using large language models uh, that have image interpretation capabilities. And so this is my one sort of sentence about the project, why I'm doing it. Uh, I answered the purpose of the project, my principles behind the project. So the ones that I want to be a little bit explicit with, but also some inherent principles that I'm going to be following. Answered sort of what I envision for this outcome for this project and what would be the wild success uh, or what wild success looks like for this project. That's the overview. Now for brainstorming, this is starting to answer um, the logistics of the project and uh, yeah, get into specifics and start coming up with an initial plan. So here's like a brainstorm that I did. It took about maybe 30 minutes most at most. And then I broke that down into an initial plan. And so here you can see these different milestones. Um, I did use ChatGPT, but I mean, why not? It's a resource available. Uh, budget and resources is a particular project. I don't need that um, since it's all just resources that I have or they're online. Now, from the milestones I had, starting to assign them some dates with the timeline key milestones. And then breaking down all of the tasks from the initial plan into this detailed action plan. So each of those I have as a task. And for each, I answered what and when. Um, if, it's, if the project involves multiple people, it could have also included who. But in this case, it's just me and another student. And, uh, and our work is quite uh, separate at this point. So in answering what, I try to be more specific in 
in, for example, what resources I'm using that I need to refer to. For example, this task is complete in an hour PyTorch class. So these were two YouTube videos that I think were pretty thorough. So that's what I need to cover exactly. Um, yeah. So that's sort of how it looks like. And, and for this, for now, I just did milestone zero, milestone one and the other tasks. I figured I'd start on maybe a week before I get to it. Um, there's no need to, to answer those at this moment, given the nature of the project. Yeah, and then the next part is, pro is progress tracking. So probably in like a week from now, I'm gonna track my progress, give each of those tasks a status, write some notes about the status, and just have sort of a accountability log to see how I'm doing. And these, the, these next files were ones I didn't get into, but for example, research and development, here I have files and documents for the, full, for the project, learning resources, notes and ideas. So these are all I'm gonna come back to maybe in a week or two, as well as review and adjustments, so the improvement plan, self-evaluation. So in about a week or two, when I start making, when I start working on this project and start making progress, I'm gonna come back to this and start filling in some of these files that I, that are still just the, the standard template. Um, yeah, so in doing this, I started to look at sort of some of the things that, uh, I need to address. So if we look at to do, oh, actually that was this one. Yeah, so if we look at to do, <coughs> these were all the different things. When I was going through the process, um, these were all the different things that I thought could be improved. So uh, is there a way to make a template folder? Tem typically templates are a single file. However, I have an entire folder filled with folders and files. So I need to see if it's possible to um, start a project with a template folder. And also see if we can, if I can make the links relative. So for example, this is a link. This one um, in this case points to a website, but it can also point to notes inside Obsidian. So I wanna see if I can make the links relative because when I copy a template folder, I don't want it to point to the template files. After that, uh, for timeline and milestones, each has a start and end date. And so I wanna be able to capture those starts and end dates and then have all of these projects with their start and end dates shown on a overall dashboard. So I need to look into how I can display that nicely. And then within each project, probably an action plan file, I want to have, I want to be able to track all the tasks in a table, have an overview of like start date or task name, start date, status, end date. Um, yeah, just keep uh, properties that, that I want to track for each task. And then some other things of just, um, went to progress track, some other things of on on usage of the template. So before I get into that, these are things that I want to, functionalities that I want to implement. But at the moment, I'm not familiar with the community plugins. So these are community plugins. And essentially what I'm gonna do is just go through resources, YouTube, um, GitHub links, anything else that I can find and really understand it. And how I'm going to do that is just in this test fault that I have implement lots of different examples of each. So yeah, let's get started. So let's take this. Go. So I'm just gonna make a folder for each. DB. 
and in there all works space I'll write down my notes yeah Starting off with data view, though. Oh, what did I do? New notes. Data view. Ah. Dwight. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so that lets us close this one. And then we do have resources we'll see here. Cool. So I believe that's this. What's this? Yeah, so this is data view as well. And then, yeah, so these are the different resources. Data view. So I think we'll start with, yeah. So we'll start with the official documentation and then we'll work our way to the other ones from there. This database you can query stuff provides and pipeline. folders in the game it's in the game folder sorted by rating with some metadata so data view table with the time played the link and rating from games sort by descending sending list games from Okay, so let's
group by genre and sorted by rating. So we're going to make this personal to us and we're going to have some uh, experience, we're going to develop some experience with this, but first I'm just need, we will just copy the examples and then make them personal. So for a full description of all, see the reference. Yeah, so this is what I have open. Um, for more brief, let's examine the two major aspects of data view. So from front matter and from inline fields. Front matter is arbitrary at the top of the document. Oh, okay, perfect, it defines it here. And inline, which allow you to write metadata directly inline in your via key values syntax. You can also write field multiple on the same line to hide. You can do that too. Once you've annotated documents and the like with, you can then query it using data views for query modes. So once you've annotated documents and the like with it, you can then query it using four query modes. Data view query language, a pipeline based vaguely SQL theme expression, which can support use basic use cases. See the documentation for details. Oh, I think I know. I think I know. Oh no, I don't know. From
So let's see. Table file name as file as from. So it looks like we're creating a table from file name. We're creating a table with file names with a rating from. Hmm, where's hashtag books coming from? Is it tags? From Front Matter that has the alias books or from Front Matter that has tag that's tagged with book. We'll see. And inline expressions, which you can embed directly within who are on, gives us as follows page name, which will access and convenient JavaScript. So it seems like this is gonna be the way to go. Learn a little bit of JavaScript. So we're essentially a task list from pages. We're looking at tasks on a given file where the task is not completed, I think. I don't know JavaScript, so I'm just kind of guessing. JavaScript equivalent to inline expressions to execute JavaScript inline. So we're looking at file, current file, modified time, something like that. I don't know. So that's a good start. So let's do that. Let's, oh, do that. Add our pictures. So let's recap. This is a plugin that allows us to use JavaScript or query language for filtering, sort, sorting, and extracting data. So it's basically we're working with data and we're querying it or filtering it and displaying it in like a table or lists, tables or lists. Yeah. Where were we? Working with tables or lists, the data can be pulled from front matter, which is the properties at the top of a document, or from inline fields. Inline fields is key value pairs. And so there's four query ways of querying. So we can again use the front matter or inline. So this is using database query language. Um, no, wait. I don't think this has to be related to inline or uh, or front matter. This is on its own a different thing. So this can be used to generate a table or a list using database query language, or you can use JavaScript. And same thing if, but in this case, this is just data for one data point, I guess. And you can use that in a sentence or in something else. And again, we can use data view query language or uh, JavaScript. Okay. So that makes sense so far. Let's go into the examples before we move forward. Let's Add that here. Official plugin documentation.
Is a live indexing query add track your sleep and automatically create weekly tables, automatically link books to books in your notes and automatically collect pages associated with today's. Upcoming birthdays. And let's just add this examples. This uh, is what I'm query curious about. Query types list. We'll get to it. Uh, yeah. How to use data indexing and data querying. The following will give you a general overview about what you can do with data view and how be sure to use it. Parts learning is built in query language against data executed have access to the DB, which provides the entirety of the check out. Yeah, so I think. I'm gonna shoot for learning a little bit of JavaScript for this. So data indexing, wait, what did it say? Data indexing and data querying. Operates on metadata, it cannot read everything but only specific data. Some of your content are available automatically. You can Heading the Raven published in annotation. So my understanding is data indexing is essentially collecting the data. Uh, yeah, collecting the data to then be queried or processed and filtered in some way. Four 
Kuna Imams, Kuna Mistira, Tags, Bullet Points. I'm just gonna skip this. I'm more interested in general functionality. But let's see. So, what can it do? This list of all your files and all list of poems where the author is Edgar Allan Poe, published. Sorting created table with the author, the day it was published. As mentions. What's this? Mentions. Oh, where it comes from? Mentions. Oh, I guess another file that's mentioned in the file. Data in line degree JS. Yes, that's what we want to get to. JavaScript reference. Cannot query all content in order to. Content needs to be some index not bullet points or task fields. field has a certain data type and then how do I add fields you can add fields in three different ways and then we add it on task
When you want to annotate a list item, When you want to annotate Yeah, more friend matter apply to the whole page. That is also available on the contacts of books. and the notes tags in the file all the items data types all fields have a type
Let it do on the page. You can add fields to work down into implicit fields or not. No, wait. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we wanted. Okay. Ten rubies. And then two inline fields. Key value pairs. Metadata pairs. Metadata fields. <laughs> with hashtag Oh, that's just a query language, which I try not to use, but I'll look at just to see what capabilities are there. I need to get to that one. Oh, um, so we're almost done. And you can also have fields on your item list. And test level.
for completion day is equal to 22. 822, so Hmm. So I'm wondering, do this Saturday. I made this on. I'm a bit confused on what the fields mean. So do. Wait. Because this seems like. Like, the, this seems like it should be part of another plugin. Um, unless someone is following these. This structure for each of their tasks. Well, I guess where they ha automatically have fields or icons. Hmm. Add a number of.
So actually we do need to go through this. Java Squid Java <laughs> Can't even speak. Uh Fetching pages from a certain source, filtering pages, transforming pages, for displaying, sorting them, grouping them, and limiting the result count. Follows the same structure and consists of exactly one query type or many fields depending on the query type, zero. One query type. Right, so from from front from front matter or from metadata fields sources are from uh, yeah so then sources are from files or tags where is this where is sources oh that's down okay we can come back to that from sources and then depending on what language. So then we're filtering the data. So choose an output type. We can do a table, a list, a task list, or calendar.
Oh. So that's all tests. So everything that has the check mark test. Here's the table, here's all pages, here's one. And the average of the values. So that could help get all the tasks. And display those. Well, do we need to display them anywhere else? I don't think we need to display tasks anywhere else, but we do want to display milestones. Maybe. We'll see. And next is choose your source. Find sort of group year one. From yeah. This inside the folder books. Format. Source could be folder. Progress. Sure. Let's see. List all the pages that I either have and are inside of the folder. Or or inside the folder, homeworks and are linked on the page, school dashboard, dashboard, current to do's, outcome, and are linked, oh, I see.
addition to the query types in our data command from there are several other data commands available that we can restrict all of our data commands but from can be used multiple times in many orders on this order that they're written from inside your notes on the information inside notes in your data field sort group So we're filtering notes based on information inside the notes, which is the metadata fields. We're sorting results, grouping, limiting how much data is split, up one result into multiple results based on the field or calculation. So this is all the pages that have metadata field too, and we're doing this before today.
one, not really on the first page. Uh, Dirk Nance. I guess I'll just continue on this. Hmm.
Those are group keys. And only the group keys by default. I'm gonna take a break and then come back and continue this. So I think I'm not gonna bog myself down going through every little detail of data view. Keep pushing it, explore the other ones, see what's possible. So with data view, we knew, we know very clearly that we can make a list, we can make tables, we can make calendars, I believe, and um, lists, table, tasks, task lists, um, and calendars. So that was pretty clear. And the way that we do that is essentially pulling from files where, from files or um, metadata in files so that's that's also clear now going on to uh, db folder actually let me check really quickly that what these videos have
Oh, yeah, so here we can see when we query tasks, you can check it off inside of the query or inside of data view. And then you can further make it organized by grouping by file link, which will show the, the name of the file and a link to the file. Yes, this is a calendar. I was not showing. So in our notes, we saw the pattern was the source where, where is where? Oh, those are the different things where, so sort by flatten we didn't see limit oh select these just saying what's the format And then there's some functions apparently. Yeah, so that I'll include it just for use, for reference. Uh, You would, oh, he's using projects. Yeah, so this seems interesting as well for the next plugin. So the next one we're going to is database folder.
six billion data. Oh, so this it looks like you can wait. That might just be the heading. <laughs> so. So we could do text, numbers, selecting, I guess, categorization, tags, checkbox, dates, and formulas. images Okay, so what I'm curious about actually, now that he was pointing it out, was I think everything, every entry, every row in this database needs to be a note. Now, does it make sense for each task essentially then? to have a note.
data view uh, pulls data either from matter or uh, what was it? Metadata fields tags. No, let's see. Toilet list task. Was there anything else? Tags, alt tags. Files to be displayed in a list. Uh, what was it? Calendar table or a list calendar table. Yeah. So my list, my definition of list includes tasks, a list of tasks, and then DB folder displays uh, a table with manual entries okay so oh that's not very good so questions do need to be so displays a table with let's just do that out with entries of fields another question does this Display images. Yeah, so it seems like you can. Maybe for books in the future. I did watch this now. Can 
Maybe I missed something. Because I can imagine that it would. If it's built on data view, there must be for some reason for it to... Well, so it is querying a particular file for a row in the table, but can it query across... Or can you specify the table without manually and automatically? Wait, how did we get this table? Settings, how do I change? How do I view? Oh, let's do this. So it seems like you can. I wonder if just the only difference, I wonder if the only difference is that DB folder has manual components to it, while data view is just completely has to be queried. Yeah, has to be queried with language. Database plugin, DB folder, data loom. <laughs> uh, did that show? I'm going to have to go back and see if I see if that showed anything. Um, Right timestamp.
Okay, so I can show this. So this is saying data view as does not have a select property, multiple select property. Nope. And you can't add rows, right? Or freeze rows or size columns. Yeah, you're basically you can only show it, but not a lot of other options there. Appearance. Mm, yeah, not much options. You can't really create or change. You can only really view in the specified formats. Yeah. And then data loom is able to do all these different things. But you cannot create or change data. It's almost tied with DB folder, except the only difference is data loom seems to have more. Is it just that? this more you can copy undo changes reorder rows that's it yeah so it seems like db folder has a lot more customization than data view Yeah, but it's only for tables. Projects, on the other hand, doesn't really have as much. However, it does have different views, like Kanban. Make MD, didn't really like that one sets property data core coming in hot let's see data core oh what is data core oh it's upcoming That's kind of cool. Nice. 
yeah so it seems like for the extra customization of the table that's where data base folder is nice Feature comparison. So let's add it here. Comparison of base plugins. we have workspaces plus I know what that looks like in my mind templates macros multi use yeah sure so this is just notes at a certain time. Mm. So let me think. Yeah, so we'll just take out periodic notes. Remind me what metadata menu is.
That seems kind of cool, but very complex. Oh, that's a database folder. Yeah. Oh wait, this is, oh, what am I doing? I wanted to see this one. Mm. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this helps manage front matter and well, yeah, <laughs> manage front matter, and then it also seemed like it could work with in line metadata fields. That would be like in combination with data view, database folder. Yeah. Now task. Okay, so task had this vault. This task format recurring. It's high priority recurring every day. Start to end. Data completion. Starting. Ending. Uh, well, what's this? The next day, day completed, moderate priority every two weeks. Oh, so this is just a data view now. 
Yeah, or whatever that is. Um, a task block opens tasks from important projects. Where'd it go? What the? Okay, let's comment this out. How do we comment out? something wrong. Path includes important project. Short mode. Oh, I see. No match. Group by heading. Oh, you can even group by heading. So,
update of new, but Okay, so now we have sort of a basic understanding of less to our Kanban and projects. Kanban is really clear to me, but we can just go through like an image Kanban. So what Kanban is, is just Kanban. You can create these columns, and then for each of these items in the Kanban board, you can add those and then drag and drop and change the location of the of the columns bam uh, let's say Manual columns with manual entries. Columns and entries can be edited, moved, edited, moved. products My notes, the next step is to add views. Views lets you manage the project from different perspectives. Four different views, table, board, calendar, and gallery. Board, calendar, and gallery. So based on the table, it's okay. However, if you want a better table, the database folder has two sixteen. Does have a fill? It is able to ignore some files. Um, it is able to customize the cell color. I'm not sure what native components are. Maybe whatever theme you're following. Um, 
this are different views. Yeah, so anything that projects table can do, a DB folder can do. And board. Um, board groups your notes into columns based on their status. So it seems it's like a can ban, however, the notes, each element in the Kanban has to be a note. Okay, let's actually write this down. Board um, like can ban, but each column is a category in a notes metadata. Each entry in the Columns is a note with is a note. Yeah. So it's not as customizable as Kanban. However, it is it's how do you say it's connected to the notes that you have. And then what is it called table? Table. table not as customized, not as, mm, as many the folder can do everything can do and more. Yeah, so we'll just save that. Calendar to display notes with the date property. Display notes with a property. Calendar. And then gallery. Display notes in as cards in grid with images. <laughs> if you only need a can break, if you only Yeah. Basically repeated it here. Yeah, so I'm not sure that I'd use projects. Um, in any way. Because I don't use Kanbans, but if I did... If I did, I guess I want it to be customizable. I don't use calories, I wouldn't use a calendar, table. Mm. Each of this is renamed related to a note. So basically what we're doing is we're, yeah, we're just toggling the task in between started, doing, and done. Or, well, backlog, doing and done. Backlog is just a list of tasks. Doing is 
whatever tasks are on deck. Mm. So then the important part is, how can I make clear the distinction of which tasks I'm doing? Done are the ones that are check marked. So you, yeah, just make sure I have that distinction. And then table is the only part that I would use. But even then, DB folder can replace that. So... I don't know where to put it. Uh, data, data. Status. Yeah, so status is I'm gonna keep track of, so no more projects. Projects is out. Hmm. Um, I have it here. So I'll leave that there. I'll leave it in this one. Change it. Put that right here. That's where I'll take it out. And then there's macros and template. I'm at two hours, almost 30 minutes. Hmm. I think what I'll do for today, I'll edit this video, cut out my email, and maybe I get started on this for yeah, maybe I'll get started on this, but most likely I'll maybe draw out how I want to display the timeline and milestones, and to iron that out a little bit, and then it, everything else is just a matter of finding specific examples or asking ChatGPT of how we can use these, all these ones, these plugins. All right.